So we're back on this one this morning. We finally got some power and some oil now. So I can finally finish my service off. I actually came, I think it was like last June or July to start it. It's probably, it's probably ready for another service now. But I'm just gonna pull the oil through. Can't remember if I left it switched off down here. Yeah, switched off down there. It's all covered in cobwebs again. So I'll pull the oil through, commission it all back up, or set it all back up, I've got my analyzer in and then we'll get it going. I did a full video on this service, if you want to have a look back, I think it was just oil boiler service. I'll put a link anyway in the, in the description. So yeah, I stripped it all down, cleaned it all out. I just need to have a tidy up in there. And then um, I test all the radiators, make sure it's all working. I did actually flush the system out as well, back in the summer. Uh, it's an empty house, so we've just been giving it up. But yeah, I'll um, get it fired up now and hopefully everything is good on it. I'm just going around bleeding all the radiators upstairs. I drained it all down over winter so nothing could freeze up. The decorator was moaning. It was too cold. But I think he's had the portable heater on. Let's see what the view's like. Not too bad. I think they've got some issues with the roof, but uh, there's a load of holes up there, but they've got like some rare bat. I don't know what it is. The Batman came out uh, in his Batmobile. And uh, basically they can't fix the holes in the roof because this area is full of bats and they're all living up in the roof so I don't know what they're doing with that. I just I just get the heating going for them. But yeah, it could be worse. A bit cold out there this morning though. I've never really been a fan of these downward firing boilers. Uh, I think the bottom bottom ones are better, but that's just my opinion. They're always a bit of a pain to bleed these through. So on these you've just got a um, that's where you bleed the pump from, because your oil pump's took down here. I've just got some rag in there at the minute, just soaking up the oil. But I've got it lit now. That's your pump pressure screw. Never never adjust that one by mistake, because obviously then you need to set the oil oil pump back up. If you accidentally touch, touch that, you will need to set it back up with an analyzer, because even half a turn on that will make a massive difference to the combustion. So just be mindful not to touch the wrong one. If you, if you don't know what you're doing, you're best off to leave it alone. Um, yeah, but if you did actually accidentally touch that, you would need an off-tech engineer or somebody who knows what they're doing to come out and set it all back up. Don't just let it, don't just let it run because the boiler will just shut up. So that's your bleed, that's your bleed point, that's your pressure, that's your oil pressure adjustment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this warm up for 10-15 minutes or so. I'm going to go around and just check all the radiators and then I'm going to come back and put my combustion analyzer in it and then I can finish off the paperwork for the service. There is a few defects uh, with the installation. It's mainly um, with the plastic oil line. oil line. It's not supposed to be showing. So we've got an issue here and we've got an issue with the tank. So obviously it doesn't, A, it doesn't look very good and B, you're not allowed any plastic showing on the surface so this really needs uh, an inspection chamber putting down here and convert into copper or or a new line putting in but yeah off tech state no no plastic you can use plastic oil line you just can't use it above the ground so it really needs it really needs sorting but all i'll do is make a note of my paperwork obviously the base the base looks okay it could do with all this rubbish clearing away from the side of it obviously we're a little bit too close to the fence um, it's not so much if the tank catches fire, it's if, there's, if anything else next to the tank catches fire. So if this, I don't know what this is, this wood still were to catch fire, the flames could jump onto the tank if that makes sense. So it really needs, well you, you'll very rarely find tanks that are compliant but I mean the tank itself doesn't look in too bad a condition. The base, the base is fine, it's 300 all the way around it, it's just obviously a few defects. I mean the flue the flue itself, we've got it lit now. The flue itself could do with an extra bracket on it. So, I mean, it is, it is secure. What we'll probably do is pop a screw, screw in here as well. It is secure, just, it's just a bit crap, really. I'll, uh, I'll sort that, but I'll make a note of the other defects on my sheet, and then it's down to the customer to obviously get them sorted. That's all you can sort of do. With obviously gas, you've got more power. 
Uh, so if something was like immediately dangerous, obviously with the homeowner's permission, you can get it capped off. Obviously, if they don't give you permission, it's down to the national grid to sort. But with oil, you've sort of got less powers. You just sort of have to notify notify your re your relevant person. You know, if it's your customer or you know whoever, and just most of the time they're fine. They'll get it sorted. But it's because obviously the tank and everything belongs to the customer whereas with with gas obviously the meter and that belongs to the national grid or the energy supplier so with the oil it's a little bit different right it feels a lot warmer upstairs already now um the ball has only been on a few minutes what it really wants is the windows opening and just leave the heating ticking over so all the moisture and everything can dry out but the trouble is with the building being sort of sealed up it never really dries out so you end up with damp condensation a little bit of air in that radiator, we'll have a look at that, we'll bleed that, but what I'm going to do is just turn the stat to 20 and leave it coming on, say, three hours in the morning and then a couple of hours in the evening, so I'm not wasting too much oil. Alright guys, I've just put the analyzer in this boiler, uh, the sample point is, quite dark, is there on these. If it'll stay in, stay in. Um, so just let I just let it run so it calibrates. It would take a few seconds for the normally if you get the excess air about 34% on these, that excess air needs to drop a lot. Yeah, I mean you just put it in. But just make sure your analyzer is suitable, obviously calibrate it and make sure it is set for the correct fuel. So in this case it's light oil. What you should be able to do is just put your Allen key in there, adjust the air, but it doesn't turn on the thing. So I'll have to have a look. It don't make any difference what you do on your own eyes, yeah. So I'll have a look and find out what's going on. So what it is with this, it is actually adjusting the air. It's just not turning the uh, numbers. That will stay in, please stay in. Um, so we've about got it set up, with the camera focus. It's not too far out, we just need, generally on these, if you get your air to about 34%, uh, they're not too far out. We'll have, we'll have a look anyway. Okay. The, the analyzer is stabilized on that, so I'm, I'm not too unhappy with these readings. So I just need to, I will check the oil pump pressure because you have to make a note on your off-tech form what the pump pressure is, and then I will be happy because the, uh, the reading just changes slightly. I always carry one of these Danfoss programmers in the van because for some reason these always seem to go faulty. Uh, this one, I know this one's grubby, but I've got to come back to the job anyway. What I want to do is just set the heating to come on for a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours at night, just to take the chill off the place. I did link it out just so I could get the boiler fire in, but for some reason these, these programmers are ever going wrong. I don't know, the trouble is when you're like 45 minutes from a merchant, it's a pain. So I rooted through the box and I found, found that Danfoss one. As I say, I know it's grubby. It's just one I use for testing, but it'll do the job. I can set it, set it to come on for a couple of hours. And then I'll, when I come back, because I've got the bathroom to do, I'll bring a new programmer out with me. So I've changed that to get it to get it working. Right, guys, I'll quickly show you this job. I've just been and picked the keys up for it. So we're starting quite a big job here. And um, there's not too much on the plumbing side, but there's quite a lot on the building side. So I've got to take all these out, probably not today. These are like um, ceramic shower trays. Uh, so basically, these, this whole lot's being gutted, all this lot's coming out. So this is the gents' toilet. I think it's pretty much the same in the ladies, wherever it is. We've got to be, be a bit careful about what we do, because there's a load of asbestos. Um, in a, a real match win next week, removing the asbestos. So I've basically just put, I need to put the keys up. So same in the ladies, all this lot gets whipped out. I imagine all this lot goes. The plumber's left is bending. Go here, Rothenberger, I think. So I guess that goes as well. That goes in my toolbox, I think. Um, so all this lot comes out. So we've just got to be careful because all the floor tiles contain asbestos, and all the sometimes the adhesive as well can contain asbestos. So you've got to be careful about what you do. But real macro to remove it all. Uh, so basically today I'm going to get the heating drain, we've got these fan convectors coming out in here. So I've got to take these out. These have got to go back though, 
I don't, I don't know where the boiler is yet, so we're going to have a look around. So these, these fan convectors go out, but they're being reinstalled. And there's, they're having a big extension somewhere. I've not had a proper look at the drawings. This is how I came in. So I think they'll be having new kitchen and stuff as well. So yeah, quite a big job. They're having extension, as I say. I think this bit over here, on the drawing, all this lot, all this extension is asbestos at the minute. So this whole asbestos end comes off. And this gets all built in brick, I think. So that's pretty much the job. There's not too much plumbing to do, but I'll, uh, I'll have a look if I can see and find the boiler and we'll get, we'll get it drained down and get these fan convectors out. So the boiler's in this little cupboard. Um, looks like we've got 42 mil flow and return. So I think that's like a 25, 55 pump. I'm not too sure. I can't quite see it from here. Oh, it's a 40, 50 actually. Um, so I'll isolate the power to it so it can't be fired and um, we'll get it drained. I'll take the fuse out obviously uh, and then we can get these fan convectors whipped out. But it's not a very big cupboard, it's quite a big boiler, I'm not too sure how many kilowatt it is. But I don't really need to look at that anyway, it's just about my own personal interest. So it looks like we've got another pump down there, just a little 1550. Not too sure. So I'll have a look at the system anyway as we go along, find out what works, what doesn't. And I'm sure we've, we're we down to alter some radiators and stuff anyway. So, but the ball is in here. So we'll have a look upstairs, see if the tank for the heating system is up here. I'm not too sure where, where else it'll be if it's not up here. The ball is just on the back side, under there. So you can imagine the tank would be up here. And there's a sink up here. I don't know where the tanks are then. Obviously it's it can't be any higher than that. I'll have a look anyway. There should be it doesn't look like it's pressurized. I mean it might be, I didn't have a proper look. But you'd imagine if it was going to be a header tank up here, they'd have been up here. Right, the header tanks were upstairs on this flat roof bit. Um basically they're under this like boxing, I don't know what you call it. So there must be a, a cylinder somewhere as well, because obviously we've got a domestic tank. And then this is the one we want, the heating. So we'll see if there's a... I shouldn't think there's a valve on the coal feed. But it doesn't even look like there's a valve on the main coming up. So I'll have a look, see if I can get this capped off. And then we can get the heating drain then. The hot water cylinder is right at the back of this cupboard. It's all full of books. So I can't really have a proper look at that. But the tank's are directly above it. So the boiler's on the back side of the cylinder, if that makes sense. Hot water cylinder, and then the tank's up there. Obviously I can't get to that so well i could but i've got to take all the stuff out but i'm not here to do that anyway i'm just here to drain the heating right i've removed the fuse uh, but there's quite a few different points in here obviously i don't want anything coming on so i'll probably try and find it in the board as well but what i've also done to make sure the boiler doesn't fire is uh, disconnecting the burner from the boiler so we know the boiler's not going to fire but again, I think all these, I'll get my tester out in a second, but I think all these run off this one spur. So this pump, that pump comes off there to that one. And then that, that's a separate isolator for that pump as well. So I think that's the main one coming in. And it runs through that, that time clock. But that, I think that's what feeds the boiler. But I'll uh, double check, I'll get my tester out. So that's the heating cold feed. It doesn't actually turn off, it just spins. Uh, that'll be replaced anyway. That's the heating vent that goes over the tank. Um, so I just need to find somewhere to isolate the uh, supply. Right, I've just tied the ball valve up with a bit of old wire. Um, I, I can't find where the internal stop tap is. I can't find the one outside either. So while the heating's draining, I'll go and find the stop tap. And uh, at least now we can get it drained down so we can get them Franklin rigs out. Right, this is inside the fan convector. Uh, looks like this one's been played about with. I'm not too sure what they're using that for. There's normally pipes that on these to stop them blowing cold. Whether that's too sure. Not too sure what's going on that. I've not had a proper look at it anyway. Uh, there's normally filters on these as well. You can pull out and clean. Because obviously these just blow, blow the motors, blow the warm air across the room. So what they're doing with these is apparently they're insulating all the walls, so basically the heaters are being reused, but we'll have to alter all the pipes, bring them forward. Which might be easier said than done with some of these, but we'll have a look anyway. We're not doing that today, basically I'm just going to drain it down for today, because my back 
is actually killing me. I think I pulled it. So I'm just going to get everything drained down and then one of the apprentices... I'm on a course next week, I'm on my heat ass. So one of the other lads will come and rip out all the toilets and stuff because my back is just killing me. Right, the incoming water comes in the corner of this, um, I think we're in the, the gents toilet. So there's no valves on anything that so far that I've seen. So we need to try and get these toilet pans out. So we'll cut some ISO valves in just so we can get the systems and that removed. Can anybody guess the job I've just done was? Yeah, say no more about them. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to whip this radiator off so I can drain it from here. I can't find any of the drain off tap. So I'll uh, just quickly take this off and then we'll drain it. And we just bodged a, a drain off tap on here just so we can get it get drained down. It's pretty much the lowest part of the system. So just drain it down the door. So hopefully I should be able to get these fan compressors taken out today. And then, as I say, one of the lads will come back next week when I'm off. Uh, just strip the rest of the bathrooms and stuff out.